All right, there you go. Finally started recording. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another amazing episode of Geek Vibes Live Review. Tia and Kelly are back again to talk about unsolved mysteries. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm doing good. How are you, Tia? Good. I really feel that we need to start our own Unsolved Mysteries series where we do our own investigating because Kelly and I were talking about the whole thing with the well-known Twitch streamer, Dr. Disrespect, yesterday. And I'm like, now I want to be a part of Unsolved Mysteries. (laughs) I I really do. It must be so fun, like, to get little pieces and, and, like, piece them together and uncover what happened for things that aren't like deadly and violent. (laughs) (laughs) And this, uh, this episode of Netflix's 15th season of unsolved mysteries, house of terror certainly was bloody. And before I start any further, I feel like this episode shouldn't have necessarily, it shouldn't have, I can't even talk. It didn't belong necessarily on Unsolved Mysteries because I feel like it was kind of solved. And I'll explain that in a second. But did you feel kind of the same way that I did about that? I I felt like it was kind of a solved case. I don't know if I necessarily felt like it was definitively solved. But what I thought was interesting about this episode in comparison to the other ones, because it took place in another country, was how... um, people used language to describe the family's relationships. I noticed in the prior two episodes, it wasn't like, oh, um, you know, they would touch each other and hug each other. They were loving, like, that type of description that really gives you insight into, like, how the family interacted with each other, we saw for the first time in this episode. So I feel like that gave a deeper level of understanding of the family dynamic than we had um, in the first two episodes. Right. And so what Kelly means is, so this is the third episode of Unsolved Mysteries called House of Terror. It takes place in France and it is about this family, Xavier and Agnes. They have four children, as Kelly was saying, they're very respectable members of the community. They're very well liked with everyone. They give this whole background of Xavier and Agnes having met when they were younger, having broken up for a year, then coming back together. And at this point, the wife, Agnes, is pregnant with another man's child, but Xavier decides to marry her anyway, which they say at some point in the episode was completely unheard of at the time. But they seem like this really loving family. They have this gorgeous home. They have four children who are all doing very well. They're all in Catholic school, which I don't know how it is in France, but we know in America that costs a lot of money. So they clearly had money. And then suddenly one day, so this is where the mystery starts. One day they disappear And apparently there's a letter left behind that to me right off the bat sounded completely fishy. The letter was saying that they moved to America. In fact, they were DEA spies and now it's time for them to go back to work and blah, blah, blah. And what was interesting was they interviewed one woman who said how fishy that sounded but then they interviewed the childhood friend of Xavier who said that that seemed totally plausible and sounded like Xavier so and this episode really unfolded things kind of kept you on your toes so what did you think about that letter at first I mean to me automatically I was like that's complete malarkey because even if they were say spies they're not allowed to tell anyone that they're spies (laughs) I thought it it was complete bull I mean even if that scenario happened in real life um there's no way the U.S. government would be like yeah pen a letter to family and friends and let them know um it just doesn't work that way I think um you know they were of royalty in their area and i think um you know the father had financial troubles i think there's probably so much more going on behind the scenes that people don't know about especially when you're that um 
high in society or at such a high level where your connections and what you do is very much so under public scrutiny. So the the quick disappearance made sense to me because if there's something wrong, um, you know, especially being who they were, I could see them trying to, you know, get out quickly. But then we later discover what actually happened and I'll let you delve into that and, and Obviously, that spirals into uh, a different perspective from there. Yeah. So at first, when it was that they all disappeared, that's so strange. That's a huge family. You have the mom and the dad and four kids. So for them to completely disappear was very odd. And as I said, this episode did do a good job in kind of keeping a lot close to the vest and letting the story actually play out. And But in my head, it was starting to kind of unravel as soon as they were saying something like they went to dig underneath the house. And I was like, they're going to find the bodies. And sure enough, they found the bodies of Agnes, the four children, and the two dogs, um, which I hate to say this because, of course, it's so... Sad, <laughs> but yeah, in my head, I was like, "Why the dogs? Why the dogs?" They're not mention it just to keep it out of the story. But why? It's like they're not witnesses to anything. So yeah, I know. My head, as the animal lover, sat there and I was like, "Why?" But you know, that's horrifying. And so it went from one of those things where, "Oh God, where's the whole entire family?" to then why is the husband not buried here? And then automatically, suddenly it turns to them uh, investigating Xavier. Where is he? Where can we find him? And the lawyer for the family said, oh, that's not Xavier. That wouldn't happen, yada, yada. But you find out all these things about Xavier and I'm kind of steamrolling here, but It was interesting because it reminded me of an episode of SVU that came out in season 20. And you find out that Xavier was having all of these financial problems that they were pretty much going to be out of money within a few months, which is for someone, I guess, who is used to money all their life. That's very uh, disheartening and alarming. And there were things that they discovered leading up to it. And I'm getting way ahead of myself because at first it was crazy that they found out in all four children, there were sleeping pills. Um, And then the wife, Agnes, had sleep apnea. And they said that her machine mysteriously shut off at 3 a.m. But that's not it. Also, they were all executed with they found bullet casings from a 22 uh, caliber rifle. So then the p- pieces of the puzzle start connecting because so not only do they discover that uh, um, Xavier had money problems, they find out that he um inherited a 22 rifle from his father once his father passed and that he had been also buying a silencer for the gun going to a gun range getting a license that would legally allow him to have said gun so it seemed like he had been preparing this for a couple of months and they were saying something that they wanted to get him on you know, to me, it just seems like first degree murder. And because not only did he kill everyone, but he didn't kill his young, not, yeah, he didn't kill his uh, second oldest, sorry, Thomas, um, till afterwards, because Thomas was at school. And so he killed his family. And you would think like enough in him was saying that's terrible enough, but he planned having Thomas come back and, Uh, give him the sleeping pills and then kill him as well. And that's why Thomas was buried separately from the rest of the family. It was just so much. um, And I have more thoughts to delve into, but I don't want to blab on here. What did you think when you heard that? I mean, that is just so terrible that 
not only what it wasn't just one night of him deciding to do that he had been planning it and then even after killing his wife and three of his children then deciding to still go and kill his you know his last remaining child um so my mind's like should i go here or there um so i guess to start i thought it was very interesting how many calls and visits to the house it took for the cops to actually discover the remains um you know i think that when you think logically about it to look outside to look under the terrace to do more of an in-depth look like that you know after a few times visiting the house and clearly something being off makes sense but it took a while before they got to that point um I have so many mixed feelings because there is literally not a drop of evidence in the house. I mean, if they said, um, you know, the wife and the kids were shot twice in the head, um, but there's like literally no blood anywhere. And I mean, to clean up a crime scene like that, I don't even know if that is possible to be honest, unless it was it was really, really planned out and there was more than one person helping. Um, so I know they had this theory that they were taken somewhere else, executed and brought back. Part of me wonders if he was involved with a group of people that basically staged all this uh, as a punishment or to get information from him, had him watch as his family was executed. Um, but the then there's that part of me that finds it strange that there was uh, that religious aspect to their burial. Mm. And there was a lot of care given to how the bodies were wrapped and they were placed uh, next to religious objects. So I find that very interesting. And it's just so hard because throughout uh, the show, as I said, the descriptions of the family were so vivid. Um, and colorful and happy and the pictures were the same way they seemed really just like a normal happy everyday family and I know that's something we've become accustomed to hearing in news reports and yeah you know all of that but it just when you have everyone around you saying the same thing and there's so many members of your family and you're of a high caliber status (laughs) It's just weird to think that if there really was that bad of troubles in the family, I get financial issues, um, but it had to stem just beyond that because there's no way that no one would have seen something or expected something. This literally just took everyone by surprise. Um, you know, so I just think that there's this whole other aspect uh, to the investigation that was never broached, not to anyone's fault, just because no one knew how deep it ran or who was involved or where to go next um you know but again like a very high level person has access to um, resources and individuals that you know you or me (laughs) wouldn't have access wouldn't have yeah well so the thing is is that i think that he did it Honestly, because from the testimonials of his friends saying that he was very sad looking at his father and how his father kind of lived a very sad life towards the end. And perhaps he was feeling that way, not only from his financial difficulties, but also he had broken up with Agnes in the beginning because he wanted to travel. So maybe his sense of adventure was trying to come back with him. The thing is, is that And I mentioned the Law and Order SVU episode, but it is based on real life, say, psychology that this sort of familiar side is common with, say, mostly men. Uh, Sometimes could happen with women, but mostly men who feel like they aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing to provide for their family and that it's better for them to be dead essentially than live with say the shame and the embarrassment and there are Especially and of course bankruptcy it, or debt and right you know all his kids are in private school and they're yeah. accustomed to a certain way of life so that lifestyle would just completely change for them yeah and it's something that say Paulie and I have talked about before and I 
don't have the research in front of me. So if I'm incorrect here, I apologize. But it was something that after, say, World War II, that some soldiers were finding that they couldn't provide for their wives afterwards and were committing suicide because that was so shameful to them. And now you have in this case where it goes a step beyond that. Um, and he's deciding to take his family out but it is crazy because his kids weren't super young like when you hear about things like that happening the children are very very young his children were adults who could go off and live in the world they didn't need him to provide for them understanding of some more that the complexities and intricacies of um, family life, of adulthood, of finances, of providing, of career and life, um, you know, which younger kids don't have. So they, they ha I feel like they would have had just a bit more perspective to be able to maybe not handle it right away, but to eventually yeah. be able to handle a situation where, you know, if you're filing for for debt or bankruptcy. But I think in this case, he might have owed some people a lot of money and it put him in trouble and they could have even threatened his family as well. And he thought I would rather do it than someone else. Um, <clears throat> but again, that's just speculation. There's so many different theories yeah. uh, we can go. One um, of, you know, you saying you think he did it. Another thing to kind of back that theory is, you know, they tracked his movements and tried to put together a timeline, especially with once they found out that the sun um, was, was, uh, killed and buried a couple days after his siblings. And it seemed that Xavier was kind of going place to place where he, I think they said where he first went, met his wife and yeah. uh, went on family vacations, almost like paying tribute or just remembering the good times or however you want to put that context into words. But, um, it seems like he was, kind of trying to memorialize them in some way in addition to clearly giving them a religious burial. And it was interesting though with that, even that aspect, because most of the time with this, like I will give the example of, I don't know if you ever heard of him, uh, but he was a famous wrestler, uh, Chris Benoit. It yeah. was a, yeah, you know, it was a famous case where they found out that he had killed his family, but then killed himself. And they say a lot of times in these familiacide cases that they, whoever is doing it will kill their family, but then commit suicide. And it looked like at some point that that's what the dad Xavier was going to do he was just as you said kind of doing a tribute to his life he wasn't really trying to hide he was on a shit ton of cameras he was taking money out he was buying drinks places all traceable aspects nothing really was done in cash so it seemed like he didn't really care because he was going to commit that act but then he goes off into the woods and they don't find a body at all. And in fact, they say that where he went leads to uh, seaports. So it was one of those things where then suddenly he becomes almost like not a criminal mastermind that's going like way too deep into it, but certainly someone, <laughs> certainly someone who's like, well, intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that he would know that the cameras would lead and that would make people believe that he was going to go commit suicide when in reality it was him seemingly escaping. So it's like, where was the end goal there? Did you truly feel bad about killing your family? Was it a financial thing or were you trying to somehow gain your sense of adventure back and your family and the finances we're holding you back. That's where my head goes with it, where it's like, wow, is this really just some messed up thing of you just wanting to relive this sort of youthful adventure and make your life a little bit more meaningful and adventurous than your father's was? Because again, his father was alone and very sad and depressed, um, dying. So, and I don't mean to, you know, interrupt you or anything, but that's just where my head goes, but dude, it's not worth it. Like just freaking divorce your family at that point. Don't 
kill them. So hard for me to wrap my head around. Was there a deep seated psychological issue going on here that just um, maybe had manifested a long time ago and snowballed out of control to the point to where we got to? Um, which is a plausible explanation. And, and some people are very good at hiding what they're struggling with internally and mentally. Um, or was there this whole big other aspect to this that prompted his movements that not forced him to do what he did, but almost gave him no choice to do what he did? Or, or was the deciding factor the catalyst to uh, take the actions he did? What I find strange is to disappear all these years or to commit suicide and not be found. That's just for, especially for someone of his stature, it just seems so implausible. And in my head, I keep thinking, was, was there someone else involved where they got rid of his body or, You know, I just don't feel like he could have done this on his own at the end of the day, whether it was premeditated, whether there there were outside forces, whatever it may be. I still just don't I don't think he could have executed this entire thing without some help along the way um, in whatever form that that might have been, especially if he was having financial troubles. And I mean, there was no records of any travel in his name. Um you know, or purchases or anything. So they, they could only track his movements for so long before it was just, he disappeared off the map. So, you know, I, I'm just wondering how one individual criminal mastermind or not, uh, could pull all that off on their own. And it seems really sophisticated for just someone who was an average family man, honestly. Um, it, it certainly was interesting to me. I mean, just the fact that they didn't find a body to me just, and the fact that he was essentially waving at the, there, they said he waved at the camera at some point. So to me, it just kind of makes it seem like he knew that he was being tracked and he strategically did all this so that they would, cause how do you, what's the best way to disappear? Make people believe that you're dead. If they think you're dead, they're not going to search for you. So then he has the ability to go. And think you're going one way and you go a completely different direction. I mean, one or yeah. two, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I That's what I'm saying that to me, it doesn't... Ne- I guess it is an unsolved mystery because it's like, did he kill himself or is he still out there? But the mystery is the big mystery would normally be like who killed the family well we know who killed the family at least we think we know that he killed the family it didn't seem like the prior two episodes where you know in and we keep going back to the first episode but honestly Ray's case is just still oh, the, sticks with me so much on that episode because yeah just- that was the best one (laughs) right but like so that's such a mystery because there literally is no evidence at all to who the hell killed him and same thing with the last episode um 13 minutes you know yeah we could sit there and say that we think maybe the stepdad did it but really there's no evidence so who killed her with this we are pretty like 99 percent sure that um you know she uh that he killed his family and it doesn't seem like really overly a mystery of whether he killed himself or um you know whether he disappeared to me i guess it's more of a mystery of why would you do that and his friend even said which it has to be so hard to be someone who was a childhood friend and to know that your friend did this and he said like look at how look how good looking his family was right they were such nice looking kids they looked like they were having a shit ton of fun all the time the wife seemed to be a really nice woman and you just decide upon yourself that you were going to take away the future of your four children and to me it's like I almost don't want to know because I find that then disgusting and the only thing to me and my mind goes is I hope either you have terrible karma or if you are out there, 
you do get arrested and you get thrown in jail, you get the death penalty. Yeah, I mean, most of of these episodes are very disturbing and they're they're definitely hard to talk about, at least for me. Um, You know, I don't like violence. So um, what I found was the biggest unsolved mystery of this whole thing um, wasn't necessarily the crime that was committed, right? It was... um, how was it committed? I mean, literally no evidence. The family had to have been taken off site and then brought back. I don't see, I just can't see any other way that with that many family members shooting two bullets in the head um, and then transporting them outside that there wasn't, there was no fibers, there was no DNA, there was no blood, there was, they found nothing. Um, So that part is the part that I find the most interesting, um, you know. Yeah. Did he put it alone? Did he have help? Like, why did he take him somewhere else? Why the two bullets in the head? Like, just the whole um, psychology behind the crime, I think that's always so fascinating to me. Um, kind of like that show Mindhunter on Netflix, if ever anybody watches that, um, that's, you know, delves into the psyche. And we'll never get to know that. And it's just so frustrating. It's like, it's frustrating. And, and the thing is that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm some sort of firearms expert, but you do know that I have some experience with firearms and yes, the, and I always have heard this, like from some, I used to work at a gun range, right? And the number one thing I heard from people all the time was, oh, a 22 caliber bullet is nothing. It's going to feel like a bee sting. No, it's not. It still can harm you. It can still kill you. Um, Is that, I mean, saying close range or far away? I mean, not to be morbid, but if he was straight to the forehead distance, um, I don't care what type of bullet is, that's going to have... It's going to do shit. And this is not to be graphic or anything, but my point is, is a twenty-two caliber rifle even close range going to... Again, this is going to sound very morbid. Is it going to blow up someone's head? No. But is it going to still create blood splatter? Yes. So... As you were pointing out, Kelly, um, where the hell is DNA? Where's the blood splatter? If they did clean it up, they would have found bleach marks of them trying to clean up blood. So that is very mysterious that the house was in such a prestigious condition, yet we're made to believe that they were, say, killed on premise or or it could be one of those things, you know, he did give them sleeping pills. If that was to then transport them, to then kill them, maybe he killed them. That's he- why I also feel like he had to have had help, right? Because one of, one of the neighbors or commenters, I forget now, I didn't get, I didn't rewatch it before we did this, like I usually do, sorry. Um said you know that this is the car they had right i don't know maybe it was like a q5 or or something similar to that size of the vehicle that the whole family couldn't fit in that so they definitely didn't escape anywhere together right before they had found the bodies but so did he take them one by one like you know i just feel like there has to be something more there it doesn't make sense it doesn't add up it just and the thing is that for one person to just do that pristinely and that's you know that's stuff that unless he just really deep dove into the dark web because he did have a few months but that is like that is someone who has done this before type level he did get they did say that he got a silencer but it is a common misconception that a silencer is going to make the gun make no sound at all it's still going to make a sound um it's just not going to be as loud but i still feel like it seems like their house wasn't you know in the middle of nowhere they had neighbors it looked like it was kind of on almost like not a main road but like a yeah that people you know commonly traveled on and uh And if you're talking about two bullets per person, that's five people, no one heard 10 shots? (laughs) Even let's say, 
I don't know anything about guns or a silencer, but even let's say that it made no sound, right? You're telling me that there were no sounds of like dragging bodies downstairs or digging or digging or like lights on in the middle 3 a.m. or a car moving at 3 a.m. Like I just we know it happens in the middle of the night. So it just seems strange that nobody saw anything out of the ordinary. And there's no evidence to back it up whatsoever, except him visiting basically places that he used to visit with his yeah. family. That's, that was that. Like The only thing that I can say is, now I did rewatch the episode last night, but I still can't remember when they said this took place. But I feel like this mystery is definitely a little bit more modern than the previous yeah. two. Yeah, um, like 2011, I think. Yeah, I mean, he had, they say he texted his son, right, to come home. And that the son texted a friend, which I would have loved if they would have said, like, what was the last thing that he sent his friend. But so clearly we're in the age where text messaging was a thing. So as you said, that's not that far away. So the only thing is that it, there may be more of a chance that if this guy, Xavier, is out there to maybe catch him and then get the answers. But it might be one of those things where there are no answers. As they said, he spoke very good English. So perhaps he is in South America. Someone said maybe Argentina, um, which I feel like is always kind of the go-to place where they say that like celebrities are hidden or like people who are supposed to be dead. Like I think Elvis is down in Argentina or something like that. (laughs) So, you know, yeah. But they said that what one of the guys was saying you know he had dark hair he could have grown that and just blended in he's not a very uh stand out ish guy so yeah looking not in a mean way (laughs) just you know he i said he was very average looking not in a mean yeah easy to blend into a crowd so yeah it was very strange so i guess as we're talking about it more there certainly is more unsolved mysteries but this episode didn't make me feel like the previous two where I was like, wow, we li- like one day they were just alive and next they're dead. And there is literally no evidence pointing right. towards anyone who would have been involved. So it's going to be interesting. I really thought that this was the UFO episode. I, I even texted. Too. I, too. Is that the next I, one? I think so. And I think I also read that they will be releasing six additional episodes later on this year. So we'll have more Unsolved Mysteries. But yeah, I did text to Kelly yesterday and she's like, is this the UFO one? I was like, no, they're speaking in French. (laughs) I'm just excited to talk about that one because I still haven't worked out my own feelings on it you know I'm still in in my head back and forth so I think talking it out with you will be really fun because it's such a just unusual topic obviously so yeah we'll become alien hunters in the next one but as of today um we explored a French tale which you know was kind of interesting seeing it in that perspective um I'm sure that if anyone out there has problems with reading subtitles, there's that, but I have no problem reading subtitles. It literally didn't make any sort of difference to me, but yeah. So uh, Kelly, do you have any concluding thoughts on house of terror? No, I mean, I think I hashed it all out. I just, there's that part of me that's like, I want to know. And, you know, like you said, we, we may never know anything, but as we said in prior episodes, I hope that with the 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 airing of these episodes on Netflix that some things do come to light, people do come forward, or maybe even just small pieces get uncovered, something. I mean, I feel like people have become very invested in these stories and these people. Mm-hmm. They are real people who went through real tragedies, yeah. and it's heartbreaking. And, you know, there's just that that human part of you that wants there to be some kind of good or positivity to come out of it. So, you know, here's hoping. 
I agree with you 100% because when the episode started, I was thinking a of that one Law and Order SVU episode. And then also I was like, ooh, I was like, this is House of Terror. This is like a haunted house thing. And then you sit there and you're like, oh, wait, but these were like real people. This isn't a work of fiction. And you do have that moment where it. I still get torn sometimes of entertainment value but also real life tragedy so but yeah um i don't really have anything else other to say about house of terror other than uh xavier if you're out there you did a really messed up thing and you should feel really horrible and i hope a shark eats you or something (laughs) um but (laughs) kelly before we wrap this up please let everyone know where we can find you what's next on the horizon and all that good stuff Sure. So, um, as always, you can find me on Geek Vibes Nation. If you go to our About Us section, um, you'll find me as one of the um, writers under there. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at K Cantro, K K A N T R O. I know I have to spell it out. Oh, it might not be that for much longer, Tia. I don't know what I'm going to do about all my. Uh, <laughs> but I also have a special guest who is sleeping, and I'm going to disturb him that wants to say hi. Is it Alvy? Oh, Alvinator! He's like, why did you disturb me? <laughs> yes please everyone make sure that you follow kelly on all of her social media platforms and stay tuned for next week when we talk about the fourth episode of unsolved mysteries and hopefully albie will be a little bit more willing to contribute with us next episode <laughs> you can of course find me on twitter and instagram tia Fabi, as well as just following geek fives nation on all of our social media accounts we're literally everywhere so no excuse and just a shameless plug because of course i have to mention it uh netflix which is where you can find unsolved mysteries just came out with its series called cursed and i wrote a review on it as well as got the opportunity to interview some of the actors last week so make sure you go to our twitter page to check that out and we just appreciate all of the support so yeah Uh, Let us know what you think about House of Terror, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.